Hi, I'm Ashley Smith, Director of Content with producer Isaac Quick in the WDSE WRPT studio. We're taking a break from Almanac North this week to bring you a look at our exciting new series, The Great Minnesota Recipe. We will be speaking with the Executive Director of Second Harvest Northern Lakes Food Bank and the host of the show and more. Coming up on The Great Minnesota Recipe Special. Hello and welcome to the Great Minnesota Recipe Special. We are so excited to be here with you today to share more about our incredible new show. The Great Minnesota Recipe is a four-part series celebrating the diverse cultures of food found in Minnesota. In the first three episodes, we meet our cooks. And in the final episode, these cooks go head to head to make their own unique version of a Minnesota favorite, the hot dish. The first episode premiered yesterday and featured Chef Tamaro Tanksley. Isaac actually produced that episode. Why don't you tell us about it? Well, you know, it was really fun to work with a chef um, who is a professional chef and loves cooking, but it was four hours away from here. We had to drive all the way to Vergas, which was, you know, actually kind of fun. Yeah. Sharon and Lance, our videographer and I, got to spend eight hours together in the car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a blast. Well, also, this, this show took a lot, and viewers might not know that, but we had two months to put this together. Tell us about what that process took. Yeah, well, you came to us and said, let's do this show. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, okay. And so we started by doing this casting call and watching videos of all these cooks and learning about their stories. And then we took the time to interview them, you know, um, set up some private conversations and see who would be best. Then we pretty much had to go right into production of it. You know, we had to schedule interviews and uh, get travel plans uh, ready to go mm -hmm. because we had only a few weeks to film uh, two recipes in their homes and interviews and then get them to the competition. Yeah, why don't we talk about that second recipe that we had. Um, it's not featured in our documentary episodes. Do you right. want to share about where it's featured? Absolutely. Yeah, the second recipe is for our Instagram exclusive show called Just a Bite. That's, like I said, only on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a really fun short look at um, another recipe that you could make at home. The one that tomorrow made that is posted right now, it posted last night as the episode aired, is uh, what she calls a crinkle. It's a take on the southern egg pie. And let me tell you what, I don't usually eat eggs, but it was delicious. <laughs> <laughs> and I ate almost a whole one. <laughs> yes, and, and if you haven't watched that yet, um, I've heard that it can be a little bit difficult to find. So just want to point out, you just got to go to Instagram, search WDSE WRPT, and it's the orange square in the feed right there. <laughs> Click on it and you'll be able to make your own crinkle pie. And kind of her unique take on that was using Phyllo dough? Yeah. Phyllo dough? Phyllo, yeah. It's it's so thin. It's yeah. so delicate. And she crinkles it up and puts it in the little pie tin, you know? Mm -hmm. And she told me the other day that she should have used like five or six of them instead of two. We only put two sheets in there. But well, give me more dough. That's <laughs> what I'm always saying. <laughs> if you missed last night's episode, not to worry. You can catch a repeat this Sunday at 5.30 p.m. on PBS North. This airing is a part of our membership drive, and we have some really exciting gifts for you, so be sure to tune in and donate. Here's a look at the episode. On the first episode of The Great Minnesota Recipe, we meet Tamaro Tangsley, a chef in Vergas, Minnesota. She uses typical ingredients and puts a flavor of her own on it based on family and tradition. I would say food definitely changed for me then. We'll also be hosting a special free event on June 21st from 4 to 7 p.m. at Clyde Ironworks in Duluth. At the event, you'll get a chance to watch the competition episode before it premieres on broadcast and trial the dishes that are featured. 
Attendees will also meet the contestants and hosts of the show, as well as hear from and support one of our partners, the Second Harvest Northern Lakes Food Bank. At the event, we'll be hosting a food drive to support the food bank and the community. Here to talk more about their great work is Executive Director Shay Morris. Thank you so much for being here with us this evening. Thank you for having me. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the mission of the food bank? Yeah, so Second Harvest is a long-standing organization in the community and our role in hunger relief is really to provide food to other nonprofit programs as well as to people directly. So um, that's really the crux of our work. Sure. So what, what nonprofits are you working with in that capacity? So throughout our region, we work in eight counties in northeastern Minnesota, northwestern Wisconsin. Uh, we work with about 40 area food shelves, soup kitchens, shelters. So locally, you would think of programs like CHUM or Damiano Center, Salvation Army programs, Boys and Girls Club, the list goes on and on. So yeah. those are the programs that really we work with to mobilize food for their um, direct participants. And just briefly, what's the difference between a food bank and a food shelf? You ask a very good question. <laughs> <laughs> so there's only one food bank in the region, that's Second Harvest. So again, our role is to really make sure we're mobilizing resources both nationally and locally. Um, a food shelf, which we also operate a food shelf program, um, would be where somebody would receive assistance directly. Mm. Okay, and you mentioned that this is the only food bank in the area. Is that an issue? Is it important to have more than that? No, actually, you know, us being the only food bank, again, our role is to make sure we're supporting those other programs. Um, so really it ensures that the resources that come into this area have one funnel to go out to to other programs and you mm -hmm. know certainly we're reaching about 44,000 people a year so wow wow now the food bank talks a lot about the power of the dollar can you tell us more about that yeah that's another great question um, so every dollar that we receive we're able to rescue and distribute about seven dollars worth of food or about three meals and the reason we can do that is we're leveraging national and regionally donated products so there's no cost of the product to get it the product is free. Our only cost is transportation storage and handling from our point of um, entry to that of um, reaching our recipients. So it's a really low cost way to feed people. Wow. wow, yes. And you talked a little bit about this already, but how large your region of service is and how big that impact is. So how far is this stretching? Yeah, so we, you know, I always give that geographical look. We serve up to Ely, down to Moose Lake, and from Hibbing all the way over to Iron County, Wisconsin. So oh, wow. about an 18,000 square mile area. Wow, so how many of you are there <laughs> operating this? <laughs> Believe it or not, there's only 17 staff oh at gosh. Second Harvest. Wow. However, <laughs> Um, we are fortunate to have about 1,300 volunteers regionally wow. that help, and honestly, they fill about six and a half full-time positions within our organization wow. with their level of service, so we couldn't do it without volunteers. Wow. That's incredible. Now, at our event on the 21st, we're going to be asking people to bring food donations. Are there things that are more important to bring? Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, certainly we'll want shelf stable just because of the type of event it is. Um, you know, we're always looking for products with a healthier side to them. So whether it's, you know, canned fruits and vegetables, again, think low sodium, think low sugar, um, cereals that again don't contain a lot of sugar. Mm -hmm. um, so think healthy and think of how we can support people and, and have really a healthy community. Sure. And out of curiosity, I know with food banks, it's a lot of these non-perishable items and trying to lean towards the healthy. Yeah. But is there a way that we're able to get these families fresh produce as well? Yeah. So actually, you know, most of our product is perishable these days. Mm -hmm. And in fact, about 28% of the food we distribute is fresh fruits and vegetables. Wow. So a lot of people don't know that. But yeah. really, this supports and supplements all of the fresh product that we provide as well. That's fantastic. Yeah. So beyond this drive, how can people get involved? How do people volunteer, yeah. like you mentioned? Certainly visit our website, northernlakesfoodbank.org. We have opportunities to volunteer. You know, you can host a Facebook fundraiser. You can give directly. There's just many things you can do to support our work. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for being here with us today. I hope you'll all be able to attend our event and bring some food items to donate to the food bank. Minnesota Recipe is our local take on a national production, The Great American Recipe, premiering on June 24th on PBS stations across the country. Up next, you'll get a look at that show.
This is the moment that we've all been waiting for. This is the opportunity to share my story. To be here was a huge surprise. We want to fall in love with your recipes. I am ready. I'm excited. I'm going to do it. I'm so excited to be competing for one of my recipes to become a tradition for other people. This is a dish that my dad taught me. It's the flavors of home. Welcome to the Great American Recipe. The Great American Recipe, a new cooking competition coming this June to PBS and the PBS app. Speaking of the national competition, I got to sit down with Minnesota's contestant, Tony Sherber. Let's take a look. I'm so glad to be joined today by Tony Sherber, who's representing the great state of Minnesota on the PBS national series, The Great American Recipe. Thank you for hopping on with me today, Tony. Thank you, Ashley. It's a pleasure to be here. Great. And can you tell us a little bit about how you got involved with the show? What drew you in? Well, one of my friends actually uh, DM'd me or uh, messaged me saying like, hey, this could be a really cool opportunity for you. You should look into it. And when I looked at it, I was like, this seems really cool, but I don't know if I'm ever going to get around to it. So a couple of weeks went by and I just kind of thought and contemplated a little bit more. I was like, you know what, I'm just going to throw my name into it, see what happens. Uh, literally a day later, I got a call from one of the producers wanting to chat a little bit more about my experience and background and my story and uh, had an interview with them and then didn't hear anything for like three months. Uh, and so I thought, I honestly forgot about it at that point uh, to then getting a call back saying like, hey, we want to bring you on for the show and let's chat some more about what it will look like. So uh, really, really quick turnaround after that, but it was an amazing experience. So what was the application process like? Was it a video submission or how'd that work? Yeah, it taught, they asked you some typical questions, you know, like how long you've been cooking? Do you have any uh, culinary backgrounds? Because this show is about home cooks. They didn't want to have anyone to have an upper leg on anything. Um, but you know, they just asked some more of the questions like, what's your social media background? Do you like to post things about food? Do you like to share food? What's your story? What makes you unique? And uh, along with that came a video submission uh, to talk a little bit more about like, what makes you stand out to be on the show, um, especially with such a unique storyline of being you know, multicultural and having a lot of different backgrounds and a lot of different stories. They wanna make sure that they choose the right individuals. And I think they really did uh, with this first season. I'm excited to see it just based off of the promos. It looks like there's going to be a lot of good recipes involved there. Definitely, definitely. Um, People itself is the biggest thing that uh, you take away from it is the stories behind everyone and how they are all intertwined with one thing, and that's food. Yeah. Well, speaking of food, tell us a little bit about your culinary background and what does food and sharing experiences related to food really mean to you? Yeah, so I definitely am someone that just loves to be able to share my food and my story with other people. Uh, more times than not, that's going to be the thing that I'm going to bring to the table whenever we get together as friends or families. Like, all right, what can I bring? What can I cook? Uh, because that's kind of like my unofficial love language, if you will. Um, so being able to share my food with other people and share my story, being a Korean uh, adoptee, uh, I know there's a lot of other people out there um, that were adopted as well that may have similar backgrounds and similar journeys of trying to figure out you know, who they are uh, in comparison to their culture and heritage. And so being able to be on a platform like the Great American Recipe Show uh, allowed me to share my story, to be able to connect with other peoples and be a pillar stone uh, for other Koreans. What are some of your favorite Korean recipes that you make? You know, I enjoy a lot of different things from the classics that you normally see at Korean barbecue. So like bulgogi, uh, I like to make homemade mandu, which are pot stickers. Um, kimchi fried rice, I'm just a big fan of kimchi in general. Um, tteokbokki, which is like a rice uh, cake noodle dish uh, and then you know a lot of different things like kimchi jjigae which is a different type of uh, kimchi soup stew and then a lot of different things so uh, you know the options are very endless but usually when I'm cooking for other people that are maybe not as aware of what Korean culture is or Korean food is uh, I usually stick to the classics Korean barbecue whether it's you know the bulgogi kalbi uh, the dumplings and the kimchi fried rice. Sounds delicious I'm getting hungry just listening to you. <laughs> So this station, WDSCWRPT, is premiering our own show, The Great Minnesota Recipe, yeah. which is celebrating culinary diversity in the state, especially in a state that's got unique climates and growing seasons. And, yeah. you know, it's an interesting place to live. So what do you think makes Minnesota such a special place for cooks and culinary experiences? 
Yeah, I think you just nailed it on the head right there. Just having so many different people, immigrants, backgrounds, diversities. You know, we've got a very strong Hmong population, uh, a Somali population, as well as, you know, the roots within Minnesota and the Midwest are very German, Scandinavian, Norwegian. So you're going to see a lot of different people with a lot of different backgrounds of immersing different cultures and blending them together like a, a melting pot. And so being able to have that opportunity uh, to showcase what Minnesotans have uh, is a really exciting opportunity. I can't wait to see more of the show. Part of what we explore in this show is going to be the immigrant experience coming to Minnesota with these diverse culinary traditions and how you adapt to this landscape and these resources. Have you done any experimenting with your Korean recipes to kind of key them into yeah. Minnesota? <laughs> Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, obviously in the Midwest, we're very meat and potatoes. We definitely love to have those accompanied with some sort of like vegetable inside. Uh, but for me, I definitely take a lot of Korean influence. And, you know, as much as there's Asian fusion, uh, I definitely take those into consideration when I'm making my Korean food. So I love making Korean tacos with uh, Korean uh, ingredients like gochujang and gochugaru. Um, to, you know, the staples like you would normally see with the sweet and salty components within the soy sauce, sesame oil. Um, so being able to like have my own twist and flair that you wouldn't normally see in Korean food, uh, but be able to bring that to the table and show my friends and family and other people uh, is something that I'm always excited to do. So the show, The Great American Recipe, pr premieres June 24th. What can viewers expect when they tune in? I think they can expect a, a very heartwarming, uh, deeply rich uh, type of show that embodies and encompasses culture, diversity, as well as just the home cooks. You know, none of us are trained professionals. We all have different jobs that we do uh, from our nine to fives. Uh, and what really makes it constant, though, is the, uh, the food and the cooking that we had uh, to be able to have those recipes shared from uh, you know, family members, mothers, grandmothers, great grandmothers, et cetera, et cetera, grandpas. Uh, it allows us to have um, our stories be shared so that way other people can connect with us uh, through this platform and through the show. What advice would you have for budding cooks that are trying to trying to get into their culinary experience? You know, just keep practicing in the kitchen. I mean, that was the biggest thing for me. Uh, I always was around the kitchen, but I really started practicing more and just testing things out and just seeing what would stick. Um, so for those that are really trying to, you know, make it in the industry or just trying to be better home cooks, you know, practice makes perfect. Uh, always uh, ask for um, constructive criticism to help you get better within your craft, as well as um, other people that are in the industry. Those are some people that could definitely be um, helpful along the journey. But have fun, that's the big thing, have fun. Uh, you want to make sure that you're taking this cooking as an enjoyment and it's nothing stressful. Great advice. And I'm sure there's plenty of people out there willing to taste test as you keep practicing. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. The line is definitely getting longer by the minute, but it's definitely something I'm very fortunate to be able to share again the food that I love to prepare. Well, thank you so much for talking with me today, Tony. And for our viewers, if you enjoyed this conversation today, you can see Tony compete starting June 24th on PBS North for the title of The Great American Recipe. I know I'm rooting for Tony this upcoming season. Next up, we're joined by our hosts of The Great Minnesota Recipe, Sharon Young and Shannon Lang. Thank you both for being here. Thank you. Nice hey, to have thanks. you. It's nice so, to be here. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad. Um, tell me, have either of you hosted a show like this before? And tell me about your experience. Sharon, let's start with you. Well, I have never hosted a show before. Um, I will tell you, it's been amazing, really fun. Love the cast and crew uh, so far. I've been able to meet some really wonderful people like Shannon. Um, it's been fun, just fun. Yeah. And, the, and the cooks, oh my goodness, forever in my heart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were terrific. Um, no, I've never, I've never hosted a cooking show, but I have done some emceeing in various forms and shapes over the years. So, yeah. It, yeah. but it's been a while, so I was really surprised when. Um, I was approached and, and really thrilled that I had the opportunity because it was a great deal of fun. Yeah. yeah. And what's the difference between your emceeing and being on this pre recorded TV show? Uh, it, it gives you a chance to make mistakes <laughs> because you know that they can get edited out. I'll be honest, that, that's, a, that's a plus. That's a plus. Uh, also, um, it, 
in this particular instance, I, cooking is definitely a love of mine, a deep love of mine. I'm a, a cook and a baker, and um, I so getting to talk about food with people, so a passion of mine with people that are interested and passionate about it, really just kind of took it to a whole new level and just made it really fun and easy. Yeah. So you have a, a background with food. How about you? Oh, food. Uh, I'm Chinese American, born in the States, but my parents owned a restaurant, small Chinese restaurant in the Twin Cities on Lake Street. It was called Kong's Restaurant. Um, it had been there many, many, many decades. And you know, really food is like the love language for a lot of people, right? Yeah. Um, I think we all can appreciate a good takeout. And um, I, I just know that, you know, with my immediate family, just food and love and good conversation is really just the foundation. It makes all things good. Yeah. Um, you're having a bad day. There's nothing like coming home to a really good cooked meal. And so that's why these chefs really sharing their cultural passions, a lot of times coming from their family, right? You can tell their the love in those recipes is right. coming out, right? That's why they tasted so, so delicious. Um, and very grateful to be able to interview them and share them with the world, you know, mm -hmm. and, and just it's like spreading their love. Yeah. It's great. Absolutely. And you both are hosts, but you have kind of a different role. Could we just, could you share what your experiences were on the show? We'll start with you, Shannon. Uh, well, I, I was, I guess, I, I was the introducer. <laughs> you know, like, hey, this is what's coming up. Getting people excited for what they're about to see. And, uh, and then I, I don't want to give too much away about the final episode. So, yeah. Uh, but I, I, I got to interact with the, the chefs a lot more in that one, and that was great fun. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah. So Sharon, <clears throat> you got to meet all of the cooks yes. before the competition, and then you got to see them at the competition. Tell me about what it was like meeting them in their homes, getting to know about them, and then mm -hmm. seeing them all come together. Well, let me tell you, just even Vergas, Minnesota, right? Um, and I won't give too much about the future episodes, but um, Tomorrow, you know, just opening her home to us and being so gracious in the kitchen. Um, you know, the, these she's a professional chef, but you really just got to meet her, um, her family. You, you could just see the photos in her home, meet her family. And, you know, as you're cooking, you know, we couldn't show everything in the episode, but really being able to just hear her talk about her family and how she loves mm -hmm. them and, and where the recipes came from, and then have her just make it look so easy, yeah. right? Um, and, and I have to say, being able to sample the, the final um, dishes was really a gift. Yeah. And, and it just, I, I wish I could color or draw for the viewers, really, you know, really share through the camera what I tasted. It, it really was a special gift. And, and visiting Vergas, um, for those of you who never traveled over there, um, it's close to Fargo. Um, and close to Holly, Minnesota. And I have friends that are, are from the area, so it's just really a beautiful area of the state to visit. Mm -hmm. Well, our, our uh, viewers will be able to taste it if they head to the website and grab the recipe. Might not be as good as these cooks make it, but <laughs> it'll be something special. But I think that's what's in, important about this show is you do get to see who they are first and, and hear about their backgrounds and their passions, and then we see them on the competition day. So let's talk about that, Shannon. What was the energy like in the greenhouse on competition day? It was fantastic. Everybody was excited to be there. Everybody was thrilled to be there. Uh, the, the piece of magic that I loved was uh, watching really what we talk about a lot in America and it, about the melting pot, and you got to see it right there in action at every station. There was a fusion of one or more cultural background that created something very delicious that was then shared. Mm -hmm. The recipe was shared with whoever wants it. The, the food was shared with the cast and the crew and, and uh, that to me was just, that, that's what it's about, right? Yeah. And we had, uh, everybody worked really well together and it was, it was exciting yeah. to, to see them you know, in those final moments, putting the garnishes on and mm -hmm. getting things in and out of the oven and getting things on the plate just so that was, you know, it, it, it really was a competition. This is, this is real deal, people. <laughs> it was, this, is not, this is not a stage thing. This is, I was yelling the times out and we stuck to them. Yes. Yes. That's great. Now, we're having this event on the 21st. So people will get to try the hot dishes that are created on the competition episode. Yes. Do you think people should be excited to come? Oh yeah. Oh my 
goodness, yes, you will not want to miss it. And the chefs are just so wonderful to meet, right? Yeah. And their personalities, and, and I think they're just, they're actually really complicated recipes that are easy to make. And I think people yeah. will really appreciate using local foods and applying that in their own kitchens. Mm -hmm. You won't want to miss it. I, I loved uh, during the competition where they, when we, they were being filmed, they all took the time to explain why they were doing the things they were doing as they were preparing the recipes, because they really want people to have success with that, the recipes in their own homes. And so that's just an extra layer of extra. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, it's really special. Well, thank you both so much for being here and I'm excited for, for the world to see you all. So make sure you <laughs> tune in to see Shannon and Sharon um, on Thursday. Thursday's the next the next episode. Yeah. So I hope you're as excited as we are about the great Minnesota rep recipe and ready to follow along to see who's crowned our first winner. The competition airs on June 23rd at 7 p.m. or you can see it early at our screening event on June 21st. This episode is one you do not want to miss. If you're unable to catch the show on broadcast each week, you can find it on the WDSE website, PBS video app, or YouTube. Be sure to tune in to the next week's episode where we meet Susie Sockerman, an Italian-style home cook from Buell, Minnesota. Thanks to our guests and our crew in the studio, I'm Ashley Smith with Isaac Quick. Let's take a look at next week's episode. On the second episode of The Great Minnesota Recipe, we'll be traveling to Buell, Minnesota to meet cook Susie Sockerman, a teacher who was brought up on the Iron Range. Susie's Italian roots and community ties shine. I can't wait to show you what Susie's cooking up. All the strongest influences in my cooking were strong women. 